Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. It's never easy to say goodbye, especially when the bond you shared was so strong. But what if I told you that there's a chance that person could come back into your life in a more beautiful way than ever before? Of course, the idea of someone coming back into your life may seem scary. After all, you don't want to get hurt again. But what if it's God's will? What if he has a plan to bring you and that special person together again? If that's the case, then there are a few things you can expect to happen. One, one of these signs is that he won't bring anyone else into your life. You see, when we make mistakes in choosing our partner, we may end up feeling like we've reached a dead end in the relationship and we start looking for someone else. In these situations, you may find that there is no one else that appeals to you. You don't have the passion and enthusiasm to move on or start something new with another person. It feels like your other half is still out there and you can't see yourself starting a new relationship. This is because God is not through with you yet and he's giving you some space to heal and correct what caused the problem in the first place. Don't lose hope because this is a sign that there is still hope for your relationship. The God you serve is not letting the both of you go your separate ways, and he is waiting for the right time to restore and join the both of you back together again. When God is done with a relationship, he will allow someone else into your life. But in your case, he hasn't, because he is still interested in your relationship. So take this as a sign that you should keep holding on and fighting for your relationship. You can fix what's broken and come back stronger than ever before. With God's help, anything is possible. Two, have you ever felt like the timing was just off in a relationship? Like things just weren't clicking and you couldn't seem to make things work? Well, you might be surprised to know that God could be the reason behind your struggles. In fact, there are times when God will break two people apart so that he can bring them back together again in a more complete way. Just like the story of the promised land in Genesis, God had promised Abraham that his descendants would inherit the land he was in, but then he took it away from them for a long period of time. However, through this process, the people multiplied, were blessed with great possessions when they left Egypt, and God prepared for those sinful nations occupying the land to be judged. The point is that sometimes God needs to remove something from our lives to arrange the proper circumstances for us to receive that blessing back in an even better way. This can happen in relationships too. Maybe the timing wasn't right before, or perhaps there were other practical factors that needed to be addressed before things could work out. It's important to trust in God's plan for our lives, even if it means experiencing temporary heartache. God wants us to be healed completely and to learn to forgive those who have hurt us before. If a second chance with someone brings healing and forgiveness, then it's a confirmation that God is at work in your relationship. So, if you're currently going through a difficult time in your relationship, consider that it could be God's way of breaking you apart to bring you back together in a stronger and more fulfilling way. Remember to trust in God's timing and know that He has a plan for your life that is greater than anything you could ever imagine. Three, it can be a new beginning. When God brings someone back into your life, it's not a coincidence. There is a purpose and a plan behind it. It's a chance for a new beginning, a fresh start together. Of course, Forgiveness and healing are essential steps. But if the Lord is behind the situation, He will help you avoid the mistakes that separated you before. When you reconnect with someone from your past, it's like picking up an old friendship right where you left off. And if you're both open to it, that friendship can blossom into something more. With God's guidance, you can build a stronger, more mature relationship this time around. He will give you the wisdom to be better for each other and to commit to a lifelong relationship. You may wonder why God is bringing this person back into your life now. Perhaps it's because he knows that you are both ready for a committed relationship. 
Or maybe he wants to use this relationship to teach you valuable lessons and help you grow in your faith. Whatever the reason, trust that God has a plan and a purpose for your reunion. Four, if this distance is being used to put God before each other, sometimes he will bring you two back together. Let's take a look at the story of Hannah in 1 Samuel 1. Hannah desperately wanted a child, but she was barren. She cried out to God and made a vow to dedicate her son to the Lord if he would grant her request. God heard her prayer and blessed her with a son, Samuel. Hannah followed through on her promise and dedicated Samuel to the Lord. But here's where it gets interesting. In 1 Samuel 2.21, we read that God visited Hannah again and blessed her with three more sons and two daughters. And Samuel? Well, he grew up in the presence of the Lord and became a mighty prophet who God used in incredible ways. Now, I'm not saying that making a vow to God will result in you getting what you want. That's not the point of the story. What I am saying is that God often uses difficult periods of waiting to produce dedicated saints who are fully committed to Him. And that's the same thing that could be happening in your relationship. Maybe the time apart is being used to put God before each other. It's possible that God wants to bring you two back together so that you can better serve Him as a couple. When we stray from God, He doesn't abandon us. He's always there, waiting for us to come back to Him. And the same goes for your relationship. So, if you find yourself in a difficult period of separation, don't lose hope. Remember that God has a plan for your life and your relationship. Use this time to focus on your relationship with Him and to grow as an individual. And who knows? Maybe God is using this time apart to bring you and your partner back together in a way that glorifies Him. As Hebrews 12.7 reminds us, Endure hardships as discipline. God is treating you as children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? It's not always easy, but sometimes we have to endure hardship and wait for God's will to be done in our lives. It's not about getting answers to our prayers here and now but about trusting that God knows what's best for us. As believers, we know who God is and what He's capable of. We know that God can be silent, and there's no obligation for Him to answer us or inform us of His plans. But that doesn't mean we should give up or stop trusting Him. In fact, accepting God's authority means actively trusting Him, realizing that He is in control and can be trusted. It's a choice we have to make in every situation, either to do things on our own or to wait for God's will to be done. And let's face it, waiting can be hard. We live in a culture that values instant gratification and quick results. We want things now, not later. But when it comes to God's timing, we have to trust that His timing is perfect. We've seen time and time again how God works in the lives of those who wait for His perfect timing. He has a plan for each and every one of us. And sometimes that plan involves waiting. When God really wants you to push through with that person or that opportunity, He will make it known. You just have to wait and trust. You might feel like you're with the wrong person at the right time, or the right person at the wrong time. But forcing things to happen before God's timing can lead to destruction. We don't want to miss out on what God has prepared for us because we were too impatient to wait for His perfect timing. Remember, God is the owner of time. He controls the whole universe and knows just when the perfect time for you is. So don't give up. Keep trusting and wait for God's will to be done in your life. As A.W. Tozer wrote in The Knowledge of the Holy, God is said to be absolutely free. He is able to do as He pleases always, everywhere, forever, and we can trust that His plan for us is perfect.
The Holy Spirit is pleased when we pray and seek Him to guide us in the issues of life. One big disadvantage you can give yourself is to shut Him out of the important things, the crucial details of your life. The Bible says in Romans 8.14 that, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. You will avoid many pitfalls if you learn to trust the Holy Spirit to guide you, especially in matters as important as marriage and romantic relationships. Who is the Holy Spirit? In simple terms, the Holy Spirit is God living in us. God exists and reveals Himself in three distinct forms, yet He's the same one God. He's Father, Son, and Spirit. If you read the first book of the Bible, Genesis, you'll see that from the beginning, the Holy Spirit is mentioned. Genesis 1, 1 1-2 In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Thus the Holy Spirit was with the Father God at creation as the second of the Godhead. In the same place, we also see the Son present. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the Word of God personified. And in the beginning, that Word was present with God, as John tells us. When God said, let there be light, He was sending the Word. The Holy Spirit activated the Word of God, and that resulted in the creation of everything. Thus the Bible, talking about Jesus in John 1, 2-3 says, He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. You see that the Spirit of God is not a pushover. He's God living inside everyone who's put their faith in and received Jesus as Lord in their lives. One of the works of the Holy Spirit is to guide you into all truth. This means that if you're not walking in the fullness of God's perfect will for your life, You either do not have the Holy Spirit to guide you or are not letting Him guide you. If you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit living inside you. Jesus said to be born again means to be born of the Spirit. A person born again doesn't live by their own mental prowess, but by the supernatural guidance and empowerment of the Spirit of God. John 3, 5-8 Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, No one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Obeying the instructions of the Holy Spirit brings in beautiful results in life's decisions. And the Word of God is full of testimonies that prove this. Therefore, when it comes to choosing your partner for a romantic or marital relationship, you, the child of God, need to let the Holy Spirit guide you to find the right person. The Bible tells us, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. If the word find is used, then it must be the result of looking for something. You can't say you found something if you weren't looking for it in the first place. This is the state of each person whom God has called to be with someone in a marital relationship. He puts a longing in your heart for a special person with whom He wants you to continue your life journey. Then you begin to search for relationships and interactions until you find them. However, the way He wants you to find them is not only by following your human intuitions, but by depending on Him. If you call the person God gives you in a relationship a gift, then you must believe that they have to come from God. This doesn't mean that they'll literally fall down from heaven. It doesn't mean that they'll just appear out of nowhere. It simply means that you both will be brought together through God's guidance. The Bible tells us that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. When you follow God's instructions by listening to the Holy Spirit and obeying Him, God will show you who's right for you and tell you how to go about developing a relationship. One of the biggest mistakes single Christians make is that we're very quick to run after someone because of how they look on the outside, how they treat us, what they have, 
and who they are socially. If you follow our videos, you'll notice that we share some of the signs for recognizing if someone is God's will for you or not. We also teach you how you can use events around you to confirm God's approval in your relationships. However, the greatest advantage you have in all of these things is the Holy Spirit. I've had the opportunity to mentor many young people, and from time to time I get to speak with them about some of these things. On one of these occasions, as I was speaking with this young lady, she told me that she easily settles anywhere she feels love and affection. If someone's kind and accommodating, she doesn't like to stay away from such a person, and soon she might become too fond of them. I told her that, in itself, that's not a bad thing. But because not everyone who treats you kindly truly has good intentions for you, it's important to be led by the Spirit of God in relationships. Remember, the Bible says that we only look at the outward appearances, but God looks at and knows the intentions and thoughts of the heart. Therefore, who would you rather trust to know the right person to have a romantic relationship with? It would have to be the one who knows them better than you do. Many young ladies became single mothers because they felt safe with a young man who brought gifts and spoke kind words to them. The gifts kept them from taking the time to check if this person's motives were pure or selfish, and before they realized it, they'd been taken advantage of. Child of God, your Heavenly Father does not want you to finally get it right by trial and error. You do not have to make mistakes upon mistakes in order to get it right. This is why He gave you the Holy Spirit in the first place. By the Holy Spirit, you will not only receive the strength to seek God's face in prayer, you will also receive the ability to understand when He answers you, as well as the strength to act on what God says you should do. Philippians 2, 13 For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. How does God do this in you? By His power the Holy Spirit working in you. It doesn't matter where you are right now. Maybe you're about to enter into a relationship, or perhaps you're just coming out of a long chain of failed relationships and aren't sure what lies ahead. Or perhaps there's someone around you who seems to meet your needs at this time, and you feel they may be the one. Whatever the situation you're in, if you let the Holy Spirit guide you, you can never go wrong. The success or failure of your marital life greatly depends on how well you let the Holy Spirit teach you and lead you. This will not only prove useful in finding the one, it will also prove useful in demonstrating wisdom that sustains the relationship when reality strikes. Many Christian relationships don't last because either one or both of those involved were not following the Holy Spirit. Hence, the relationship was built on an emotional experience of butterflies in the stomach and a mental picture formed through personal expectations. These things often fade when reality reveals itself, and both are left stranded, not knowing what to do as the relationship dies. However, when you let the Holy Spirit guide you, you'll find that you won't be stranded like this. Take time before you move further with anyone, or before you open yourself to any romantic relationship. Make up your mind to let God lead you. Make up your mind that you aren't going anywhere with anyone unless the Holy Spirit tells you to. Tell yourself that you're going to keep your emotions in check and will wait on the Lord. Pray constantly. Fast so that your spirit can hear God when He speaks. Stick with the Word of God. It will help you understand the voice of God through the Holy Spirit more and more. You're less likely to miss it if you practice these three things consistently. Are you tired of wondering why your soulmate hasn't come into your life yet? You know there may be some things blocking and holding you back from finding your soulmate. First and foremost, let's address the elephant in the room. God is not a foolish God. He's not going to send you your soulmate if you're surrounded by distractions and temptations. And let me tell you, if you're out there fornicating and leaving the way of the world, God is not going to bring someone else's spouse as your soulmate. 
So let's not blame God for our own mistakes and bad decisions. I know some of you may be thinking, but what if I fall in love with a married man or woman? God understands, right? Wrong. God clearly says in his word, do not commit adultery. So let's not twist his words and try to justify our actions. God is not going to come down and change his commandments just because you're distracted by that boy or girl. That's not how it works. I cannot stress enough, God is never going to give you another person's husband or wife, period. It doesn't matter how in love you think you are or how much you want that person. Getting God's blessing to take someone else's spouse is never going to happen. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. God is not going to tolerate your bad behavior. I mean, let's be real here. How many women and men have come to me and said they're falling in love with married individuals and that God understands their situation? It's absurd. God is not going to support your sinful actions, no matter how much you try to justify them. So if you're serious about finding your soulmate, you need to remove these blocking things. Let go of the distractions and temptations that are preventing you from finding true love. Focus on your relationship with God and trust that He will bring the right person into your life at the right time. Remember, God is not a foolish God and He has a plan for your life. Trust in Him and watch as He works wonders in your love life. Satan makes your partner seem emotionally distant. Now, one of the biggest roadblocks to finding your soulmate is when Satan decides to get involved and make your partner emotionally distant. Yep, you heard me right. It's not just physical distance that we have to worry about, but emotional distance as well. You might feel like your partner is there physically, but mentally and emotionally, they're miles away. It's like trying to have a conversation with a brick wall. It's like you're on your own and your partner isn't even trying to understand where you're coming from. That intimate connection that used to be so magical, well, it's gone, and all that's left is tension and stress. It's like there's a force trying to keep you apart. And you know what? It's not even your fault. It's not your partner's fault either. It's just the devil trying to keep you apart. It's easy to get confused and not know what to do when you feel like this. But the key is to never give up. You need to pray, communicate, and try and find a way to connect with your partner emotionally again. So don't give up on your partner. Don't let the devil win. Keep fighting for your relationship, and soon enough, your soulmate will come right to you. Remember, when someone understands you emotionally, they get you forever. And when you understand someone emotionally, you get them forever. Both of you cannot cope in hard times. Have you ever been in a relationship where your partner just can't seem to handle difficult situations? You know, like when the going gets tough, they just get going. It can be pretty frustrating when you're trying to build a life with someone, but they just can't seem to cope with the hardships that come with it. It's especially tough in the world we're living in right now. With all the chaos and uncertainty, we need someone who can be our rock when everything else feels like it's falling apart. But if your partner keeps running away every time things get a little tough, it might be a sign that someone's not quite right. Maybe they have some issues they're dealing with, or maybe there's some blocking around both of you that's causing these problems. Either way, it's important to be observant and notice when things start to feel off. Because here's the thing, if they truly meant to be your soulmate, they'll stay with you through thick and thin. Sure, there may be times when it's tough and you both feel like giving up, but if you can get through those times together, your relationship will be stronger for it. On the other hand, if your partner keeps running away every time things get a little hard, it might be time to reevaluate the situation. Are they really the right person for you? Or are they just holding you back from finding someone who can truly be your rock when you need it most? It's important to remember that we all have our struggles, but the right person will be there to help us through them. So don't settle for someone who runs away at the first sign of trouble. Keep your eyes open 
stay strong, and remember that your soulmate is out there somewhere, waiting for you to remove those blocking things that are holding you back. Satan tries to divide the both of you. Now let me tell you, Satan is a sneaky one, we all know. He'll use anything and everything to get in between you and your partner, but don't worry, Jesus warned us about this. He said, no city or house divided against itself will stand. That means if Satan can divide you and your spouse, then he can conquer your marriage, taking away your effectiveness for God. And let me tell you, the devil is out here trying to destroy marriages left and right. That's why we see so much divorce, even in the church. But what exactly does division look like in a relationship? It starts with all those little disagreements that seem insignificant at first. Bickering, arguing, lack of communication, misplaced priorities, unmet expectations, and unnecessary pressure are all signs of division. And before you know it, you're so focused on yourself and your own needs that you forget about your partner. That's where humility comes in. If you want to combat division, you need to lay aside your pride and focus on being reconciled with your partner. This means being willing to apologize, communicate, and make time for each other. If you do this, you'll be reunited and your effectiveness for God will remain. But remember, Satan doesn't give up that easily. He'll keep trying to get in between you and your partner. That's why it's important to be prayerful and seek God's guidance. If you keep steadfast in your worship, God will surely come to your aid and help you find the perfect person for you. So let's make sure Satan doesn't get the best of us. Remove those blocking things and find your soulmate today. Lies. One of the biggest blockers in any relationship is lies. Yep, you heard me right, lies. It's crazy to think that lying has become second nature to us humans. We lie, cheat, steal, and destroy, and that's just part of who we are. But when it comes to relationships, we need to be honest and upfront with each other. I mean, come on, who wants to be in a relationship filled with lies? That's a recipe for disaster. We all have those little lies that we tell ourselves or our partners, thinking that it's no big deal. But those little lies can pile up and create a mountain of distrust in your relationship. And that's where the devil comes in. He whispers those lies into our hearts and minds, making us doubt ourselves and our partners. But how can you spot those lies when they seem so convincing? Well, it's simple. Test everything. Replace those lies with the truth that's in God's word and meditate on it. Know what God says about you and your partner and believe it. That way, when those doubts and insecurities start creeping in, you'll be able to recognize them for what they really are, lies. Ask yourself, what lies have you been believing about yourself or your partner? And how does knowing the truth guard your effectiveness for God? Lies are the devil's way of breaking you and your partner apart. So if you're in a relationship filled with lies, it's time to sit down and have a heart to heart with your partner. That's why trust is so important in any relationship. When you have trust, it becomes difficult for the devil to come in between you and your spouse. So let's kick those lies to the curb and build a foundation of honesty and trust in our relationships. Because your soulmate is out there, waiting for you to remove those blocking things and find them. When we fall in love, we're often drawn to commit more and more to the relationship with our partner over time. One of the problems, however, is that relationship crises soon begin to rock the boat, and not many relationships survive these crises when they show up. You may love someone, but still not be able to sustain a relationship with them. Many people have watched the people they once loved go on to marry someone else after the relationship failed. And even though God strictly forbids his people from divorce, unless on the serious grounds of unfaithfulness or infidelity, many marriages still crumble because of one mistake or another. 
You need to know that God wants to teach you, as His child, how important it is for you to make Him the pillar and center of your life. This is the only way you can get the most out of the blessings He's reserved for you. God loves you and will not give up on you because of any shortcomings that led to past failures in your relationships. He promised to never leave you or forsake you. Hence, His love is always beckoning you with open arms, awaiting your return to Him. When you realize your need for God and you honestly admit that you're willing to take responsibility and follow His instructions, you position yourself to experience restoration. What most single people fail to realize is that with God, it's not too late to get back what you've lost. One thing about restoration is that it's multidimensional. What do I mean? Let's take a side journey and observe the life of Job, the servant of God. He lost everything he had. Some were stolen, some were completely destroyed, and others died. Yet the Bible says that God later restored everything that Job lost. How did that happen? Did the dead come back to life? Did the robbers return the stolen animals? Did the possessions consumed by the fire rise out of the ashes? How did God restore things? Restoration can involve the return of what was lost, like the prodigal son or the lost sheep of Saul's father. However, it doesn't stop there. With God, restoration can involve new things that become better replacements than what we lost. So if we're able to bring that into our conversation today, it means that God can bring back a relationship that failed in the past. Or if that wouldn't work for any reason, He can guide you into a new relationship with a better experience and future than your previous relationship. So how does God guide you into restoration? How do you know that God is bringing back someone you love after a failed relationship? How do you know you're about to meet someone you'll love, even if you failed in the past? Well, here are some signs. When you see these signs, God's showing you that He wants to bring the two of you together, or He's about to bless you with someone with whom you'll find love again. Number 1. A sign that God will restore your relationship is that you'll feel a newer sense of love and attraction to the person. This is two-dimensional. It can involve developing a love for a new person in your life or a fresh feeling of love for someone you used to be with but with whom the relationship failed. Please note that God will never do this with people who are already married. This means that He'll never put a feeling of love for another person apart from your husband or wife to whom you're married. That would be contradicting His word and encouraging married people to have relationships outside their marriage. However, this can happen with single unmarried individuals who He's still developing into strong blessings for oncoming generations. You see, when crises begin to rock relationships, love and affection for each other begin to wane. I agree that nobody likes to be blamed for a relationship problem or failure. Everyone wants to be proud to be pointed to as the reason a relationship survives. Also, I believe you want to have a relationship that lasts. No one wants to fall in love with someone only to lose the person because you didn't know how to avoid certain mistakes. Hence, when God begins to teach you and help you recognize yourself and to prepare you for the right person, He will begin to put love in your heart for them. If it's your spouse, you'll begin to notice a new sense of love and affection for them. You'll begin to find yourself desiring to be with your partner and being happy around them. This is something you may have lost over time in your marriage. If you're unmarried, you may begin to sense this towards the person with whom your relationship didn't work or with the new person God's brought. It's a sign that God may want to bring you two together in a stronger bond one of the strengths of a restored relationship is the couple's love. They have seen the worst of each other and are now more than willing to face life together. Permit me to say that if God's in your relationship, this will always happen, no matter how far you two get from each other. Number two, another sign that God will restore your relationship is that He'll begin to give you visions of a future together, unlike with anyone else. You need to know that beyond your physical companionship, one of the major reasons God brings two people together is for the future He has for the two of you. 
One of the effects of a failed relationship is that you both may no longer see a future together. Maybe because of the actions, habits, or decisions of one person. The person whom you love may no longer wish to continue with you. Like I said earlier, you can love someone and still not see a future with them. However, if after your failed relationship, God begins to show you a future with this person, either the one from your old relationship or the new person he's bringing into your life, then he's about to give you restoration. Abraham could let go of Hagar and their child Ishmael because God showed him that his future was with Sarah, his wife, and she would be the one to bear the child of promise, not Hagar or any other woman. When God gives you a vision of his designed future for you with someone, he uses that to validate his agenda for both your lives and to strengthen your convictions of being with each other. So, you can rest assured that the restoration will happen, even if it isn't looking like it will right now. God will make it happen at the right time. You just stay in step with him and be ready to do whatever he asks you to do. Number three. A third sign is a better understanding of yourself and how to manage situations, either with the old partner or with the new partner God's bringing into your life. One proof that you're not ready for a new relationship or restoration of a God-ordained former relationship is a lack of understanding of the root cause of the problems that caused your past relationship failures. However, on the other hand, when you develop a better judgment and understanding of your mistakes, of yourself, of your partner, and of situations in such a way that if they were to arise again, you'd know how to handle them. That is a sign that God's about to give you that love or passion you once lost. So be on the lookout. When you notice that you're quicker to respond and handle situations in a more mature way than you used to, and when you've noticed that you've developed stamina to forbear and manage things better than you used to, then God is bringing restoration with that person again. Lastly, number four. The last sign is a deeper respect and value for the person than before. Just like love and affection, respect often declines in a relationship when things aren't working out. In fact, one of the root causes of many failed relationships is the decline or complete absence of respect and value for each other. You would struggle to stay in a relationship where you're no longer being respected or valued, and so would your partner. When there's little or no respect and value, love cannot thrive, and conflict and disagreement will abound. However, when God wants to restore your relationship, He will plan a growing respect and deeper value for this person in your heart. He will open your eyes to start seeing how important they are to your life and God's plan for you. He'll open your eyes to see how much benefit they bring into your life when they're with you. As you begin to see these signs, don't be afraid or hesitant in stepping out in readiness to take your place when the opportunity comes. If you resist God or refuse to recognize these signs because of your pride, selfishness, or fear, you may be shutting yourself out of the chance prepared by God to bring you into fulfillment. No one knows the hearts of anyone like God. Hence, when God wants to bring someone back into your life, he knows what suits you more than you can imagine. Hence, accepting them is declaring your complete trust in God's wisdom and good intentions towards you. Have you ever had that feeling when someone just keeps popping into your mind? Maybe it's a friend you haven't spoken to in a while a family member who's going through a tough time, or even a complete stranger. It's like no matter how hard you try, you just can't shake the thought of them. It's easy to brush these thoughts aside and go on with our busy lives, but what if God is trying to tell us something? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Sometimes we can't explain why we feel a certain way about someone, but we can trust that God has a purpose for bringing them into our lives. Let's look at the reasons 
why you are suddenly and constantly thinking about that person and what God is trying to communicate to you. God is telling you to pray for them. When someone keeps coming to mind, it can be easy to dismiss it as just a passing thought. But what if it's something more? What if God is calling us to pray for that person? In the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. When we pray for someone, we are asking God to work in their life, to guide and protect them, and to provide for their needs. And when we pray for someone with a righteous heart, our prayers can be powerful and effective. But why should we pray for someone who keeps popping up in our thoughts? Maybe they're a friend who's going through a tough time or a family member who's struggling with their health. Maybe they're a complete stranger who needs a helping hand. Whatever the reason, we can trust that God has brought them to our attention for a purpose. God is telling you to reach out. Have you ever had the feeling that you should reach out to someone, but you just don't know why? Maybe it's a friend you haven't spoken to in a while or a family member who lives far away, whatever the case may be. When someone keeps coming to mind, it's worth considering whether God is calling us to reach out to them. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17, it says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. When we reach out to others, we're not only showing them love and compassion, but we're also sharpening ourselves in the process. We are building relationships and strengthening our connections with others. But why should we reach out to someone who keeps popping up in our thoughts? Maybe they're going through a tough time and need someone to talk to. Or maybe there's someone we haven't spoken to in a while, and God is calling us to reconnect with them. Whatever the reason, we can trust that God has brought them to our attention for a purpose. Reaching out to someone can be a scary thing, but it can also be one of the most rewarding things we do. We never know how much our words or actions might mean to someone else. By showing them love and compassion, we are sharing God's love with them, and we are making the world a better place. Remember the words of Jesus in Matthew 25, verse 40. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. When we reach out to others, we're not only building relationships and sharpening ourselves, but we are also serving Jesus himself. So the next time someone keeps coming to mind, consider reaching out to them. You never know what kind of impact you might have. God is telling you that they may be in trouble. When we constantly and suddenly think of someone, it's important to pay attention to the emotions that come from those thoughts. Are we feeling worried, anxious, or burdened? If so, it's worth considering whether God is calling us to intercede on behalf of that person, because they may be having a special need. In the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. When we intercede for someone, we are presenting our requests to God on their behalf. We are asking Him to intervene in their life, to bring comfort and peace, and to work all things together for their good. Maybe they're going through a difficult time or facing a challenging situation. Maybe they're struggling with an addiction or dealing with a broken relationship. A simple call can change the mind of a person who is going to harm themselves. Whatever the case may be, we can trust that God has brought them to our attention for a reason. Interceding for someone can be a powerful act of love and compassion. It shows that we care about them deeply and that we believe in the power of prayer. And when we intercede for someone with a heart full of faith, we can trust that God is listening 
and working on their behalf. God is telling you that they are the one. If you're someone who is looking for a lifetime partner, it can be frustrating when you feel like you're constantly thinking about someone, but haven't found that special someone yet. But sometimes, when we keep thinking about someone, it's because God is trying to tell us that they might be the one for us. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 22, it says, He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. This verse tells us that finding a spouse is a good thing and is something that we can ask God for. God wants us to be happy and fulfilled in our relationships, and He can help guide us to the right person if we are open to His guidance. But how do we know if the person we're constantly thinking about is the right one for us? One way to discern this is to pray and ask God for clarity and guidance. If this person aligns with your values, brings out the best in you, and is committed to God, then it's worth exploring the possibility of a relationship with them. As we focus on building our relationship with God and pursuing the things we love, we may just stumble upon the person who is meant to be our lifetime partner. God wants you to forgive. Another reason why you might be constantly thinking about someone is that God wants you to forgive them. Forgiveness is a powerful act of love and can bring peace and healing to both ourselves and others. Sometimes we hold on to grudges or past hurts and it can consume our thoughts and emotions. But God wants us to release those burdens and extend forgiveness to others. In the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. This verse reminds us that forgiveness is a commandment from God and that we should forgive others just as He has forgiven us. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting or excusing what someone has done to us. Rather, it means releasing the hurt and anger we feel towards them and choosing to extend grace and compassion. Forgiveness is not always easy, but it is a necessary step in our journey toward healing and reconciliation. If you find yourself constantly thinking about someone who has wronged you, ask God for the strength and guidance to forgive them. It may take time and effort, but as you release those burdens and extend forgiveness, you will find a newfound sense of peace and freedom. In conclusion, when we find ourselves constantly and suddenly thinking about someone, it may be God's way of communicating with us. Whatever the reason may be, we should trust in God's plan for our lives and follow His guidance. As we seek His will and direction, we can find peace, joy, and fulfillment in our relationships and in every aspect of our lives. Remember, God is always with us, and He has a purpose and a plan for every season of our lives. Let us trust Him and embrace His love, grace, and mercy.